What up players, it's Wallboss Tay up in this mud. Today we're finishing our hand gunner from Oslin here. These are the colors that you're going to need. Mephiston Red. Evil Suns Scarlet. Mournfang Brown. Ngehina's Gold. Bugman's Glow. Ushati Bone. And is that it? I believe that is it. Yep. So uh, thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one. All right, so we are going to hopefully finish our our guy here. So we're gonna start with Ceramite White. And what I am doing is something that I don't usually do, but I'm, uh, I watered it down, thinned it down, and then, and then I am planning on using it as a highlight color without shading, but just using it on top of the Othwan Gray that we ended up with. So in order to do this, you want to make sure you don't have too much on your brush and that you feather, really feather the paint as much as possible so that it doesn't cover over the entirety of the old color but is rather a highlight. So a wet palette is great for this because it allows you to thin down your paint and then give you easier control of it when you are actually painting with it. <clears throat> so if you have a lot, a lot of paint when you paint it on these, when you do these vertical strokes, you might end up with residue at the top and the bottom of your stroke lines and uh, they could clump there if the paint is not thin properly. But if you thin it with water or Lamian medium or some other kind of paint thinning medium for, for acrylic paints, then it will spread nice and smooth. It won't have any, any kind of nasty clumping. You want the paint to go on as smooth as possible. Now if I screw up, the, the easiest way to rectify this is to use some kind of blue white color like Othwan Gray or uh, the Fang or Rust Gray, something with that, that's really light gray, a uh, touch of blue in it, and water it down a lot, thin it down a lot, and then paint up, uh, paint a, like a glaze, a shade of it. but try and not get any of this ceramite white into the shadows. Remember when I first started painting and still I, I still am afraid of white whenever I have to paint it but the more I do the more practice I get the, the more comfortable I am with it. I think all you have to really do and I'm still learning but the advice I can give for where I am in my painting career is all you have to do is just make sure it's that you have uh, good control over the paint on your brush. Don't load it up too much. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to take some Agrax Earthshade now and we're going to shade uh, just about everything. I was using my detail brush. I'm going to use a little bit of a bigger brush now for this part. I'm going to start with the feather on the hat. You could also use Carabird Crimson for these reds. Uh, that would work just as well. I decided to simplify it though by using the same shade that I'm painting onto the hat.
We're also gonna paint the, anything that's brown or red. So the stock of the rifle here. red cloth hanging off the end. Um, the parchment down here. So I got a little bit of it onto the uh, white you can see on the stocking. So easy remedy if you're using a wet palette, which I don't know why you wouldn't at this point, your white should still be usable. So all you do is go back over it with the white. It might take you a couple of, of uh, layers to go over it, but you wanna make sure you give each layer at least a couple seconds to start drying before applying the next layer. And that's one of the, the main tips I can give for when you're fixing a mistake. Kind of be patient and give, give the fix time to set. All right, we're gonna let this dry and then we're gonna come back and uh, do a little bit of highlighting and finish off with this model. While I'm waiting, I'm just going to double check that there's not any crazy pooling of the wash in the feather. The feather has lots of sculpting detail on it. Each, it's got a lot of strands. So I wanna make sure that it doesn't pool too much in those areas or else it'll be really nasty to get out. Or paint over, rather. So we do want that shadow in there, but but we do not want to um, create too much of a puddle. It's about good. Nice and shiny. We'll also give the guy, our trooper here, a little bit of a touch of Raikman flesh shade. Let's see if I can find. Seraphim sepia. Ta da! Raikland flesh shade. I was actually looking at the skin, quite happy with how it came out. Nice and, uh, nice, nice and pink. With colorization to it. get a little bit of shade right under right into the eyes to give that some some nice dark colorization so it, we don't even have to paint it we could just say that he's squinting his eyes and um, that solves that problem looks real nice now we're just going to touch the hair a little bit with seraphim sepia give it just just a little kiss of the sepia color is going to make it look nice and uh, give it a nice blonde shade when it dries. Dirty blonde. I call it the David Spade blonde. It's not corn yellow. C-O-R-N, not the blood god corn. And it's not a brunette. It's just a really sandy, dirty blonde.
All right, so we're gonna let that dry for a little while and um, we'll come right back to finish up with the final highlights and uh, details. All right, so now we're going to um, paint the reds up. We're gonna highlight them back up with Mephiston Red. It's all a little, a uh, bit of flash on the scarf on the banner, so I just shaved that off. Uh, also, while I was waiting for the last video to upload, I took a little pin vise and I drilled the barrel of the handgun. You may or may not want to do that as well. I just thought it added a little bit more to the look of the model, you know? I'm using a wet palette as always, so that helps the it helps me control my paint a lot to make sure that the paint doesn't get too thick and clumpy, especially with the, the base paints. So I'm using a lot of short and uh, smooth strokes for the for actually painting because it's really easy to just dab on a thick amount of paint and leave it there. We're trying not to do that. So by using a lot of shorter strokes like this you are also able to feather the paint on which means kind of blending the edges of the paint strokes. So I was um, continuing to do research on Oslin just so I'd have something to talk about because the um, the rest of the steps from here on out are going to be pretty I won't say tedious but just you know you need some patience so I thought well if you guys are doing this with me and you guys are painting on your own projects you can at least listen to some of the research that I found doing uh, doing my research you can listen to some of the cool nuggets of fluff and fiction that I found the Storm of Chaos, which was the campaign that they did a few years back for Warhammer Fantasy, in which Archaon and his united army of chaos kind of invaded the Southlands. Uh, when they went through Ostland, they did a lot of damage, and um, I have uh, all this information from Sigmar's Heirs sourcebook for the Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 2nd Edition. Not sure if it's still current, because it seems like Games Workshop reset the timeline. But uh, I love it. I love to use it. it. It's very fleshed out. It gives you some a lot, some some really great opportunities to to um, create fluffy units and stuff for your towns. So. Uh, one of them is, some of you who have watched the F Fluff Hunters video might remember this one herdstone called the Blood Fane. And it's in the, the middle of the Forest of Shadows. And Sigmar's Heirs actually talks about it and says what it is. It's a big uh, herdstone, like I said, and it's dedicated to corn. So it describes it as being in a clearing and um, the stone is four sides and it's facing the four different polar directions, north, south, east, and west. And on each side, it's impossible to tell what the original color of the stone was because it's been so matted over with eons of gore. And there are four sets of manacles in each side so that they could chain up four different prisoners, maybe to represent the four different chaos gods to pay fealty to them. I don't know, I know that the place is dedicated to corn because it talks about how when the Storm of Chaos was happening, there was this one champion of corn, warrior of chaos, and uh, he was pillaging and raiding, and as he was going through this one town, destroying everything, he, he thought he felt uh, corn's presence, urging him to go off into the forest and find this location. So he does, and he sees this old beast man, who is the who was the, the previous owner, or the the I guess watcher of the herdstone. And so he challenges him to a duel, 
uh, like many or most great duels in Warhammer, it ended with the Beastman being decapitated. Evil Sun Scarlet next. And so the champion took his place. He's the new uh, watcher of the Waystone, or the Hearthstone. And uh, I love it, I love it. It's really cool. It's, um, it also says that he's currently gathering his strength. He's kind of cr putting together a small force to go raiding through the refugee camps outside of Furlongen, which is where this fellow comes from. He's one of the firelocks of Furlongen. And um, I, I, I think it's really cool. There's another story of one of the towns in the south of Oslin that borders on Talabikland. And uh, some of you might not know that Talab the Talabikland colors are red and yellow. So if you've ever seen an Empire State Trooper with red and yellow stripes or um, quarters, then that's where they're from. And um, there's this one town that is right on the edge of Oslin, bordering Talabikland. And the fluff for that town is that it was like a miracle that it survived uh, because it, it's left pretty, pretty untouched by the chaos armies as they marched south and everybody was like oh my gosh it's a miracle and the ruler of the town this one baron uh he was he's taking in all these refugees from other cities and uh, everybody's saying that he's really good at taking care of everybody making sure they're all fed and and taken care of and um and so everybody looks up to him and they say you know you should be the elector count of this province because the current elector count Von Raukoff is, you know, he's not really doing much of anything except fighting. He just wants to take the the, the armies out and, and fight against uh, chaos. And he's not doing any rebuilding. He's not taking care of his people. So they're all saying, you know, Baron, you should, you should like see if you can make a claim for the uh, Elector Count seat. And that's kind of working to his advantage because a lot of these voices are belonging to agents sent by the Elector Count of Talib, Talibikland. And he's told the Baron, you know, if you can weasel your way into the Elector Count seat, or into the uh, into a position of power over there, the Elector Count seat, then he said that I will um, make a treaty with you and let you rule as a Grand Baron, but uh, annex all this southern Oslin for you. So a lot of political workings going on behind the scene, but it's really interesting because the, we're moving on to Dumbo Brown now, the um, Elector Count of Talibikland is still a human loyal to the, the Emperor, even though he wants to increase his lands, but what he doesn't know is that even though the Baron said, oh yeah, it's a good idea, I've, I, I, I'll work with you, uh, he doesn't know that the only reason the town was spared from chaos is because the Baron has already made a deal with Slanesh and the champion of Slanesh who came to the came to the city and said, if you don't dedicate yourself to Slanesh, I'll burn and pillage this city and kill you and everybody in it and sacrifice you to him anyway. So the guy was like, all right, fine. I'll worship Slanesh and he became a follower of Slanesh. What we're gonna do is we're gonna mix Kislev flesh now with Bugman's glow. Uh, about one-to-one -one ratio, so even Steven. And um, so now he's been corrupted by chaos because he wanted to save his people and also himself. Um, now nobody knows that this is going on. But it's, you know, like I said, great fluff and just really, really, really interesting. Let's see if... This does what I wanted to. I'm not really sure about this color combination. I'm just kind of making it up on the fly. Yep, that works. Especially when you're painting in skin, it's really important to not make the highlights too sharp. You don't want too much of a contrast because uh, with with clothes and with things like these these feathers and stuff, it's really 
not that noticeable, but on skin, um, we just naturally, our skin doesn't have these harsh transitions of color, so you, you don't want too, too much of that. Yep, so everybody's playing everybody against everybody else. And there you go. That looks like it should do it. I am going to base this guy and then we're going to wrap up. Okay, so the next uh, last couple steps we're going to do is we're going to take some Ushati bone and we're going to paint back up, highlight rather, any of the purity seals on our trooper. So right here. Actually, I don't, they're probably not called purity seals since that's a 40k thing. Uh, scrolls. Prayer scrolls, we'll say. Yeah, I don't know if I care for that color very much, but we'll go with it. Ushati bone is one of those colors where you might need to use a couple of layers. All right, the last cool place I want to talk about in Auslan is this one town, uh, the, the town, or the, the capital of the province was a city called Wolfenburg, but it was totally sacked. So they had to, uh, the elector count and moved all of his armies and his council to this town called Salkalten. And it's a coastal town, and it was this kind of like sleepy merchant town, but because of the storm of chaos, made it very, um, no, like very important all of a sudden. I'm looking for uh, gold now. And so the Elector Count is really angry, you know, because his, his forces have been decimated, his uh, army is in shambles. It's basically, his whole province has been literally overrun and he's trying very hard now to get it back under control and so he's he's in he, he's in Salt Carlton Morn Fang Brown for the hat and he's in Salt Carlton and he's um, taking out all these loans and uh, trying to call in all these favors and petition all of his old comrades and allies to give him troops because he's a warrior like I said more than a politician and he wants to retake the old uh, retake all of the towns and cities that have been overrun by chaos that have chaos warriors beastmen and mutants and stuff running amok and rioting and looting his his cities he wants to take them all back so he's gathering his forces he's sending envoys to all the different cities and uh, he's sent an emissary to the Emperor Karl Franz to uh, le let him borrow some rakes guard, uh, some knights of the rakes guard, so that they can go in and uh, clean out cities like Wolfenburg, or like to uh, clear out the forest and and just retake all of the cities that have been sacked and looted, so that his people can move back in and go on with their lives. And um, a lot of people are taking advantage of of the situation, and uh, they're doing that by. Um, preying on the weak, on the refugees, and um, selling themselves 
to the highest bidder as mercenaries. Gehen is gold. So if you're a role player, the city, the, the province of Oslin might be a good place to set your adventures because um, you could find a lot of adventure hooks. The Elector Count von Ralkov could hire the adventurers to go in and clean out, you know, a nest of of beastmen or they could be sent into the ruins of Wolfenburg to try and secure a place of st strategic importance such as the Temple of Sigmar. Um, there's just so much opportunity in Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 2nd edition. Anyways, with the new edition, I'm not so sure. Uh, very, very last thing we're going to do is we're going to write some script. And we're going to do that using my Micron Arts Pen 0 .005. You can also use Abaddon Black on a very small tipped brush. We're just going to write some prayers for this poor guy, hopefully, to see him through the battle. And it just makes squiggly lines with a diagonal curve to kind of look like they're very fine cursive, lines written in cursive. You don't want the rows too spaced apart. You want to try and make the rows as close together as possible. So it kind of fools the eye from far away into thinking there might be little, little tiny words written. Uh, but yeah, I, I usually enjoy fluff hunting, but for, for these Warhammer provinces with a resource like Sigmar's Heirs, the supplement for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay 2nd Edition, it's been a lot of fun. And there's your trooper, your uh, handgunner for the province of Osland. You can um, use anything you want to do for the base. I thought giving him a, a brown rim, uh, possibly putting some foliage and greenery. I don't have any, unfortunately, here, but um, some clump foliage and some grass would not look out of place, would look really good. So thanks for joining me. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed this little video and we'll see you in the next one. Latest players!